weighing heavy on a lot of people's hearts and minds, and that is how to stay sane and profitable when things are going a little nuts. Everyone right now is concerned about the coronavirus, uh, the impact on our health, on our wealth, on our future, on our ability to close deals in the case of the mortgage space. You know, right now there's a lot that is inhibiting a lot of mortgage professionals right now. You may be concerned because your government offices have shut down and you can't even record the note of deed to get the deals done. So everything's pretty much on a stop in terms of closing deals. Or you've got uh, buyers backing out because they're concerned about their finances and their livelihood and their ability to pay uh, their mortgage payments. So perhaps you've been having deals drop like flies in your pipeline by virtue of the uncertainty right now. Uh, perhaps you're concerned about the fact that you've got the kids at home with you and you're wondering how you're going to take care of them and work because schools are all shut down. There's a lot right now to be concerned about. And then, of course, we've got the news uh, feeding us all a matter of things to really get whipped into a frenzy of fear about because uh, we see all the, the cases increasing both uh, worldwide as well as nationally, as well as locally in our state or province or our town or county or city. And so I just acknowledge that right now this is indeed unprecedented, uncharted waters. And uh, this is certainly an unprecedented situation and a lot of people are concerned and have good reason to be concerned. And so today my job and my goal is not to undermine or uh, gloss over or uh, limit the fact that this is indeed a real crisis that we're dealing with. I'm not here to make light of it. What I am here to do is to equip you and to give you some perspective to help you show up powerfully in the face of this challenge, to help you really get in a place of resourcefulness in the face of this challenge so that you can act in a way that allows you to have peace, poise, resourcefulness, love, and a sense of proactive, positive action in the face of this challenge so you can deal with it effectively and proactively as opposed to being whipped into a frenzy of fear and getting in a very terrorized state where you are now instead of taking proactive action you're hunkering down shrinking back contracting and allowing the reptilian brain the brain that is fight or flight in your natural inclination to protect yourself your family and so on to take you out of the game of really capitalizing on the opportunity that's at hand here. Because even in the face of this challenge, there is indeed opportunity. And while you won't hear about that in the news, you won't hear about that in social media for the most part, I'm here to be that beacon of light for you and to remind you that there is enormous opportunity right now, even in the face of this challenge. So we're gonna talk about how you can stay positive, how you can stay sane, and how you can get yourself in the most profitable uh, you know, positioning in your business possible in the face of all the trials, tribulations, and challenges we're facing right now with the coronavirus and all its implications, ramifications, and impacts that you're facing and your clients are facing and your partners are facing. So you may have seen two sides of the spectrum that are happening right now on the news and in social media. On one side of the spectrum, we're seeing people who are trying to profiteer from this coronavirus, you know, stockpiling a bunch of hand sanitizer and then trying to sell it on Amazon. That is not what you want to do right now. That is not smart. What you do want to do is you want to have tact and strategic positioning in how you're dealing with this challenge, but you're not necessarily going to go out and do crazy stuff like trying to sell hand sanitizer on Amazon just because you know a lot of people need hand sanitizer right now. You're not going to try and sell toilet paper on Amazon. So that's an extreme case, but nonetheless, that's one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum is 
shutting down your business entirely, saying, I'm just going to hunker down. I'm going to wait for the storm to roll over and I'm not going to do any proactive prospecting. I'm not going to meet with any realtors. I'm not going to do anything to grow my business, expand my business, fill my pipeline. And I'm just going to hunker down and wait for the storm to pass. That's the other side of the spectrum. I don't want you doing that either. Because if you think about it, if you have people who are relying on you, you have a team members who are on your team who are relying on a paycheck, for example, or you have you know, family members who are relying on you to pay the bills. The last thing you want to do is just shut down operations entirely and do nothing and just hunker down and wait for the storm to pass. Think about all the negative implications and impacts that would have both for the people who rely on you and on you in terms of your income, in terms of your ability to rise up and make the most of the challenge that's at hand right now. That's the opposite of what you want to do because that is contraction in the face of challenge as opposed to expansion. I want you guys to step up and expand while everyone else is contracting. I know it's not easy. I know it's not your first inclination, but the champions of this world, the leaders of this world, the inheritors of tomorrow are the ones who find a way to be the light in the darkness and expand while everyone else is contracting. So right now there are different ways to respond and react to this challenge. I don't want you to try to profiteer doing silly things like selling hand sanitizer on Amazon. I don't want you shutting down operations and just hunkering down and crawling in the corner in the fetal position, feeling sorry for yourself and waiting for this storm to pass. I want you to understand that there's a fine balance and I want you to find that happy balance where you're making sensible precautions, you're taking sensible precautions and you're keeping yourself centered in poise, peace and power in a resourceful state and you're doing what's necessary to make the most of this challenge. Because if you think about it, in times of fear, like the times we're facing right now, Leaders are needed more than ever. When people are in fear and they are in extreme experiences of uncertainty, they don't know what's going to be happening in the future. They're freaking out. They're trembling in their boots. This is the time more than ever that they need leaders like you and I to be that pillar of strength, that light in the darkness that merchant of certainty, to lead them in this dark season, to give them proper perspective, to give them certainty where they lack certainty, to give direction and counsel and strength. This is the time for you friends to rise up and to be that leader for your family, for your partners and for your clients. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, this is the time when leaders are needed most and leaders are absolutely invaluable to help people who are hurting right now, who are suffering right now, who are trembling in their boots with fear and uncertainty right now and to lead them into promise, lead them into making the proper tactical and strategic decisions that they need to mitigate risk, optimize opportunity, and to navigate these turbulent times with wisdom and discernment. So you are needed more than ever before. Your leadership is needed more than ever before. I heard from one of my mentors recently, a great quote, he said, stress reveals the cracks in everything. You put stress on something, it reveals the weaknesses, the cracks that in ordinary times, normal times, you'd never notice because it's easy to overlook. It's easy to be complacent and not, not notice those weaknesses. But in times of stress, all of a sudden it reveals those weaknesses. For example, if you've got weaknesses in your marriage under stress, those weaknesses are going to show up. The fangs are going to come out more often. The bickering is going to show up more often. The resentment is going to show up more often. And all of a sudden now you're 
in a place like we are right now, where a lot of us are working from home and we're in close quarters and we're around our, you know, our significant other, our spouse 24 seven, you gotta be knowing those cracks are gonna be revealed. And all of a sudden now the bickering is going to be exasperated, not because those cracks weren't there before, but just because it was easy to cope and to neglect those issues and to gloss over them and to soften those problems and to just not really pay attention to the weaknesses that were already there. But now under stress, those weaknesses are there. Same thing in your business. If you've had weaknesses and cracks in your business where you were not doing consistent proactive prospecting and you were just relying on you know, being in reactive mode as opposed to proactive mode and relying on passive lead sources instead of proactively generated sources and you're relying on the low hanging fruit and you were leaving money on the table on your database and you're working with bottom feeding, whining, simply complaining, jelly donut eating, low producing realtors instead of top producers and you had a anemic set of lead sources. Now under pressure, those cracks are being revealed. Chances are now you're noticing, holy crap, all that low hanging fruit I was relying on before is drying up. All of a sudden rates went up and all of a sudden those refis that you were scooping up a week or two ago are all gonzo and they're kicking the tires and they're pissed that they missed the opportunity. And, you know, the purchase business, a lot of your deals might be, uh, you know, drying up due to people shrinking back in fear about the fact that their livelihood and their income is at stake and uncertain. And they're not sure if they're going to even have their job next week. And so because you don't have a well diversified, multi-pillared, multi-media, multi-stream lead source business uh, that has a foundation with multiple pillars and you're just relying on one, two or three different pillars or maybe a rather anemic set of lead sources, you're noticing that this stress that you're facing right now with the coronavirus is revealing those cracks in your business. And the same thing with your partners. Your partners are dealing with the exact same thing. If they were relying on an anemic set of lead sources and they were in drift mode instead of drive mode, reactive mode instead of proactive mode, and now the stress of this circumstance is upon them and they're noticing, holy crap, all that low hanging fruit is dried up. What do I do now? That weakness, those cracks were, were already there. It's just because it was sunny skies, lollipops, unicorns and rainbows, and it was the fair season of their business. They were easily distracted and it was easy to gloss over those issues. And they easily continue to cope by allowing that low hanging fruit to distract them and they neglected to deal with these cracks and to fix these cracks and these problems in their life and their business. So now more than ever, these people are trembling in their boots. They're freaking out in fear. They're living in lack, limitation, scarcity and fear. And now more than ever, they need a leader like you. They need a merchant of certainty like you to show up and shine and to be that beacon of light in the darkness for them and to lead them past their fear into certainty, to lead them out of the adversity into opportunity, to show them the way to promise peace in the face of this challenge, show them how to prosper in unprosperous times, show them not just how to survive, but thrive in these uncertain times. Now more than ever, they need you to rise up and to be that pillar of strength, that beacon of light, so you can shine like the stars in the nighttime sky, as opposed to being part of the problem, and you being just another civilian with your thumb in your mouth, your tail between your legs in the fetal position, feeling sorry for yourself, with your nose in the screen of the fear-mongering news that's spewing out nothing but bad news all day, every day, and you're wondering why you don't feel very motivated. You're wondering why you're feeling depressed and deflated. Wonder no longer. What you focus on expands. And if you focus on fear, guess what? What do you get more of? More fear. You focus on the problem. What do you get more of? More of the problem. And then you're showing up to your interactions with clients and with realtors and with team members, transmitting that frequency of lack, limitation, scarcity, and fear. What do you think you're going to attract more of? More of the same. You can't afford to eat from the bread of fear right now, guys. 
People are looking to you as a pillar of strength. You can't afford, if you want to be the beacon of light, if you want to be the leader in such a time as this to lead them out of the darkness into the light, you can't afford to eat from the bread of fear that buckles you in the knees and has you buckle like cheap lawn furniture when you need to be strong. So one of the keys to staying sane and profitable when things are a little nuts is you got to be zigging while everyone else is zagging. While everyone else is, you know, being gluttonous and indulging in the buffet of fear in the news media, you're very tactful and strategic about being sparing on how much of that you consume. Because there's a big difference between useful information, actionable information, practical information that allows you to make take sensible precautions and mitigate risk and use that information to protect yourself and your family and your team, and then going overboard and being excessive with it and getting yourself in a position where now you're whipped into a frenzy of fear and you're no good for anybody, including, including yourself. When you're in an airplane, when they're talking about the safety uh, policies and procedures, what do they say? They say, if you have someone, a dependent, like a child, Don your own mask. What? Don't you don your own mask first? Because when you don't take care of yourself first, you're no help to anybody, are you? You know what I'm saying? So you've got to take care of yourself first. You've got to get a routine, especially if you're not used to uh, working from home. And a lot of you are working remotely right now from home. You've got, you're probably not used to having a routine where you're working from home where you're able to stay focused and having a proactive plan where you can plan the work and work the plan. So I get it. It's something that you're going to need to build some muscle around. It's a new routine. You're going to need to entrain and ingrain, but this is the time not to be neglectful and just be willy nilly and fly by the seat of their pants. This is the time where you want to plan your work, work your plan and be diligent about having a morning routine, right? Like, you want to start the day knowing what you're going to be doing for the day, not just the first thing you do is roll over and scroll through social media and scroll through the, you know, the headlines from the news. That's a great way to start the day in fear. If you want to stay sane and be profitable in these so-called unprofitable times while things are a little nuts, you can't afford to be average. If you want to have average results, or rather extraordinary results, you can't afford to be average. If you want to have champion results, you can't afford to have chump level routines. Whether you're in the sunny sky seasons or the stormy sky seasons, you need to have and stick to a champion level routine. So now that you're working from home, you might have distractions like the kids at home, you might have distractions like social media and so on, you've got to do all you can to mitigate those distractions. For example, right now, you know, you've got the same amount of time you've always had, right? But it's easy to distract yourself and to be busy, but not necessarily be productive. And so you can fill your days with busy work, but it's not necessarily productive work. The question you want to be asking yourself is, how can I use this time to my advantage? How can I use this challenge to my advantage? How can I deal with this threat and yet prosper in it and prosper from it? What if this is happening for me, not necessarily just happening to me? What if this is a stepping stone as opposed to a stumbling block? How can I deal with this threat proactively, strategically, and with wisdom? Those are the kind of questions you want to be asking yourself, because if you don't, what happens is you just fall into the current of fear and let it sweep you into the attitude of average and have you in contraction as opposed to expansion. You, If you want to be one of those radiant light superstars who rises out of this challenge victor with victory, victoriously, and to be able to leave your competition in the dust and have your competition be roadkill while you're prospering and all your competition are dropping like flies. You can't afford to do what everyone else is doing. You can't afford to think how everyone else is thinking. 
You got to be zigging while everyone else is zagging. You got to be expanding while everyone else is contracting. So it really comes down to how to deal with any threat, not just this acute threat that we're facing right now with the coronavirus, but how do you deal with any threat? Very simple. Take sensible precaution, right? Don't stick your head in the sand. Don't pretend it's not there. Don't make light of it, but see the threat for what it is. Take sensible precautions to mitigate the risk of that threat. And then don't let it affect your emotional home one iota. Don't let it steal your peace. Don't let it steal your power. Don't let it steal your resourcefulness. Keep yourself anchored in emotional home of resourcefulness, love, peace, and proactive action, knowing that this is just another threat. The threats in life, the challenges in life are constant friends. It's like the ebbing and flowing of the tides. We're either in a threat or coming out of a threat. We're either in a challenge or coming out of a challenge. That's just the fiber and fabric and rhythm of life. And yes, this is unprecedented. Yes, this is an acute and an extreme threat, but nonetheless, it's the normal fabric and rhythm of life to be dealing with threats. You should deal with this no differently than any other threat. Take sensible precautions to mitigate the risk, to protect yourself, your family, and your team, and your business, and then don't let it impact your emotional state one iota. Easier said than done, right? But that's why I don't consume the news. People are thinking, Doran, don't you need to be informed? Yes, I will look at headlines really quick. I won't spend more than a minute looking at headlines. And then I go back to what's my proactive plan? What's my plan to prosper in the face of this challenge? What's my plan to use this challenge? to get better, stronger, wiser, and to serve those who are relying on me, my clients and my team in this difficult time so I can be the light in the darkness for them, so I can be the strength, the pillar of strength for them in this time, in such a time as this. How can I shine like the stars in the sky in this dark season? I want you guys to be thinking the same way because the last thing I want you guys to do is to hunker down, feel sorry for yourself, contract, live in fear, and just hope for the best and contract in a state of complete trembling fear and lack of resourcefulness. Because think about it, that does nothing for you. That doesn't help you deal with the problem. It doesn't help you prosper in unprosperous times. It doesn't help you to navigate this trial with tact and wisdom and discernment. All it does is it shuts down your faculties of reason and resourcefulness. It shuts down your ability to navigate this problem and instead of having this challenge be an opportunity, it is just pure adversity and it's unnecessary suffering. Stress, strife, and fear all becomes a prison of your own making and it's unnecessary suffering. And I know it's not easy with all that's going on on social media and the news to be that pillar of strength because what you focus on expands and what you consume ends up consuming you. So when you consume the news and you consume all that fear, it ends up consuming you. So you've got to be very vigilant not to be excessive in consuming it, knowing that it's like cyanide. If you drink too much of it, it's gonna kill you. You've got to be very sparing. Probably a better metaphor, it's like alcohol. You can have a little bit of it and it might take the edge off a little bit, it might change your state a little bit just in terms of, you know, being able to feel a, a little bit of that edge off. And sometimes, you know, a couple shots of tequila is a good thing. A margarita is a good thing. Same here. A little bit of information about the problem and getting some headlines is a good thing to stay informed just on a very, you know, high level. But if you binge out on it, next thing you know, you're getting your stomach pumped and you're in the hospital and you're no good to nobody. So be very vigilant not to overconsume on the fear, fear mongering, fear spewing news because they profit from giving you that news. They profit from clicks and the more fear they can whip in you, the more you're going to click and the more they're going to prosper. So remember, it's a machine. It's, an, it, it's a business. The news media is a business. 
And if you come to that without your eyes open and you just start letting yourself being addicted to the clicks and addicted to the scrolling, you become part of the problem. I want you guys to be part of the solution, not the problem. And that means you need to be vigilant with your eyes open, clear headed, and keep yourself anchored to a resourceful uh, state of peace, uh, power, poise, love, resourcefulness, not fear, not contraction, but expansion. How can you show up in love, peace, poise, and power in the face of this problem? That's the way I want you to be thinking. That's the question I want you to be ruminating your mind on, marinating your heart on, and getting connected to the answers to that question because the better quality questions produce better quality answers. If you want a better quality life, you gotta develop a habit of asking better quality questions especially in the face of challenges when you're more inclined to be asking the lower quality questions like why me why does this happen to me why did this happen to happen have to happen to me right now why does this happening to the world right now why is this happening to our state our province our country right now our world right now those questions give you bad quality questions and those will give you bad quality answers so the better quality questions you can ask in this time the better quality answers you will get and the better resourceful states you will stand in and the more value you will bring to your clients and your partners. Because believe it or not, right now, your partners need you more than ever before to be that beacon of light for them, to ask those quality questions and to bring those quality answers and solutions into their life while everyone else is hunkering down, feeling sore for themselves in fear and living in uncertainty and in contraction mode, this is your opportunity to leapfrog above and beyond and ahead of your competition, leave your competition in the dust and poach some of these partners away from lazy, lackadaisical, complacent, neglectful, in fear and trembling loan officers who are neglecting their partners and are part of the problem instead of the solution. You can be that beacon of light for them when they're being neglected from these trembling fearful loan officers that are just hunkering down hoping for the storm to end and you can be that beacon of light and lead these partners out of the darkness into the radiant light of certainty of prosperity to thrive not just survive to win and to conquer while everyone else is contracting you're showing them how to expand operation expansion in the face of everyone else just being in contraction. That's the opportunity, friends. I've said it before and I'll say it again and I'm gonna keep saying it. That's the opportunity. Easier said than done, but that's the opportunity. So you wanna kind of think about it like you're driving in a car. You know, if you were to get in a car, what do you do? What's the first thing you do? You take sensible precautions by putting your seatbelt on, right? You don't start freaking out and say, what happens if I get hit or someone hits me? What happens if I get really hurt and I can't provide for my family? What happens if I die? What if someone in my car dies? What if I get T-boned? What if you know I become a paraplegic because I get hit and all of a sudden I don't have use of my appendages? Like Obviously, if you start asking those bad quality questions, you're gonna get bad quality answers. You're not gonna go anywhere and you're gonna live a very small life in fear. So obviously you don't do that, do you? You take sensible precautions, you put your seatbelt on, you mitigate risk, you don't text while you're driving, you stay focused, you stay alert, you're defensive and offensive, right? You play both offense and defense and you just do your best to mitigate risk. You don't lose your peace, you don't lose your power, you don't lose your resourcefulness, you live in love, discernment and wisdom and tact and self-control. Reminds me of a great Bible verse. It says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind or self-control or self-discipline, different versions of it. Those are all different synonyms of the same thing, self-control. That means we have a spirit of love. We have a spirit of power, which means we're able to do things in poise and peace not in fear, 
The opposite of fear is not courage, it's love. How can I be love for my clients? How can I be love for my partners? How can I be love for my family? In this time where everyone else is contracting in fear, how can I expand in love? And self-control is kind of an interesting word because it implies that you have the discernment to identify what's out of your control, what you need to give up to God, give up to your maker, give up to the universe and trust and surrender, not worry about because it's out of your control. So discern what's out of control and surrender that to your higher power, surrender that to God, surrender that to the universe, whatever you might call it. And then for yourself, you discern what do I have control over? I have control over my mind. I have control over my emotions. I have control over my time, what I use my time for. I have control over my perspective. I have control of how I show up in the world in the face of this challenge. I have control over the calls I'm going to make today. I have control of how I show up when I make those calls. I have control over how I can use this to become better, stronger, wiser, and sharper. I have control over all these different things. So self-control is inextricably linked with also understanding what you need to surrender to that you don't have control over, like the economy, like the stock market. We don't have control over that. Like the government office and the government fu functions, we don't have control over that. But what you do have control is how you use your time and how you show up in the face of this challenge. And the last thing I want you to do is to lose sight of that and just be swept away in the current of fear with an attitude of average and just allowing yourself to be a normal civilian instead of warrior or a warrioress of light, just being a normal civilian and being a, 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 one of the sheeple who get led astray by the media and allow themselves to binge in all this fear and all this chaos and all this uncertainty and then be, be becoming part of the problem instead of being part of the solution being part of the darkness instead of being a beacon of light. I don't want you to be part of the problem. You don't want to be part of the problem either. You want to be a beacon of light. And so this is how you do it with tact, with wisdom, with discernment, understanding what you have control over and what you don't. Just simply discern how you're going to mitigate risk, take sensible precautions, just like putting that seatbelt on, and then stay alert and look for the opportunity because what you look for, you get. What you focus on expands. If you focus on opportunity, guess what you get more of? More opportunity. If you focus on what you're grateful for, what do you get more of? More of what you're grateful for. If you focus on success and abundance, what do you get more of? More success and abundance in spite of unabundant times, in spite of uncertain times, in spite of tur tur turbulent times. Or you can do the opposite, focus on fear, lack, limitation, scarcity, get swept into that current of the attitude of average, get sucked in the vortex of feeling sorry for yourself and feel powerless. And then all of a sudden you lose your sanity, you lose your peace, you lose your poise, and you just let that fear contract you and you do nothing. And you end up in neglect, compromise, complacency, and ultimately regret. And you become roadkill. Don't let yourself be roadkill. Let your competitors become roadkill because at the end of the day, that's their choice to make. Let other people live in fear, but not you. Let other people drift, but not you. Let other people be mere civilians, but not you. You're called to be a warrior of light, a warrior S of light, a leader, a pillar of strength, the light in the darkness. That's who you're called to be. And this is a very unique time in history to step up and to be that merchant of certainty while everyone else is screaming out from the core of their soul for leadership, for certainty. You can be that person, especially your partners. Right now, what we just recently created is a special uh, custom-tailored coronavirus campaign designed to reach out to top producing realtors to really have you stand out from the pack. Now, this is a customized version of a campaign that's already been working for years now for our clients, where we upload a list of top producing realtors into the system. Instead of doing what the average people do in this business, which is cold calling without a value proposition, being an unwelcome guest, an annoying pest instead of a welcome guest, and just 
calling the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday, being annoying, being a pest and grinding, trudging through the mud with concrete blocks on the feet just by sheer force, throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping something sticks, hoping that someone eventually will say yes. That's doing it the hard way, friends. That's like digging a hole for the foundation for a skyscraper with a gardening trowel. That's doing it the hard way. That's like, you know, that worked 10, 20, 15 years ago. It doesn't work anymore. Realtors aren't having it, especially in a time like this, right? Or you can be calling them up and, you know, commiserating with them on how bad the market is. And you can complain with them and because, you know, misery loves company. That doesn't work either. Instead, what you can do is do what our clients are doing, which is being that beacon of light and reaching out to them and letting them know what everyone else is contracting. We're expanding. And now we're bringing certainty to that uncertainty. We're showing them how... We're helping our realtors expand and grow and profit and prosper and thrive while everyone else is just hunkering down trying to survive. So that is the key, my friends, is to be zigging while everyone else is zagging, to be countercultural and to be counterintuitive. That's the key to being extraordinary. You want to be extraordinary? You can't afford to think like the ordinary. You can't afford to feel like the ordinary. You can't afford to behave like the ordinary. Conventional wisdom produces conventional results. If you want to be extraordinary, you can't afford to be realistic. Right now, everyone's trying to be realistic. People are thinking, right now, everyone's freaking out. Everyone's hunkering down. Everyone's quarantined and doing social distancing. They're not going to want to hear from me. They're not going to want to talk with me. They're not going to want to meet with me. Our clients are the complete opposite. This is the time to be reaching out while the competition is stepping out of the way. We can't meet in person. Perfect. We'll meet on Zoom. We'll meet on Zoom and I'm going to get more partners than ever before while everyone else is hunkering down. I'm going to poach top producing agents away from their compromising, neglectful, fear mongering, trembling, living in uncertainty loan officers that are doing nothing for them but commis commiserating with them and complaining with them. And I'm going to be that beacon of light. I'm going to be that blessing they've been praying for. I'm going to bring certainty in the uncertainty. I'm going to expand while everyone else is contracting. Those are the clients who are going to win. Those are the inheritors of the earth. Those are the leaders of tomorrow. Not people get swept away in fear and let the current of fear and mass media sweep them away into the attitude of average. Does that make sense, guys? So that's how you stay sane and keep your peace and your poise in the face of this challenge when things are a little nuts. This is how you stay profitable and thrive while everyone else is just struggling to survive. So... I want you guys to be expanding while everyone else is contracting. I want you guys to be that merchant of certainty while everyone else is screaming out for certainty. You can be that certainty for them. You can show them the way to prosper in so-called unprosperous times. And frankly, what else do you have to do? A lot of you right now, you're twiddling your, th your thumbs at home. You don't really know what to do. You're, you know, you're maybe babysitting your, your pipeline, hoping you don't lose any more deals, but you don't really have any proactive offensive plan. A lot of you are just playing defense instead of offense. When's the last time you saw any elite competitor, either as an individual or as a team in sports, who won by playing mere defense? I'll tell you, 0, 0.0. Not a single one. You won't find a single one who won by playing defense alone. You have to play offense and defense. What's your game plan to play offense right now? I know chances are you're already inclined and already entrenched and already programmed to play defense because that's what everyone's doing. My question to you is, what are you doing to play offense? What are you doing to get ahead of your competitors right now while they're, while they're sleeping and stacking toilet paper and hunkering down? What are you doing to gain more market share? What are you doing to sandbag deals so that if your current government office is closed, as soon as it reopens, you can put a whole whack of deals into the pipeline? What are you doing to attract more top producing realtor partners right now? You could be meeting with them on Zoom. You could be getting those alliances and adding value and showing them the pathway to freedom and showing them how to fill those holes. No, remember, that pressure they're in right now, the stress they're under right now is revealing cracks in their life, cracks in their business, cracks in their lead generation, cracks in their database marketing, cracks in their reputation management, cracks in their follow-up, 
craps, cracks in all the different areas of the business and you can show them how to fill those cracks. But if you don't know how to do that, or if you're focusing on your own cracks and you're focusing on fear and lack of limitation and scarcity, you can't give that what you don't have. If you don't have certainty, you can't give certainty. If you don't have solutions, you can't give solutions. If you don't have the light, you can't give the light. This is the time, guys, to make sure you're focusing in like a laser beam on the light, on the solutions, on the opportunity, not the problem. And to not let this problem take you from your peace, from a state of resourcefulness, from a state of love, from a state of gratitude. Now more than ever, you want to double down on gratitude, double down on certainty, double down on peace, double down on the fact that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Don't lose sight of that. The Great Depression was the biggest millionaire maker on the planet in recorded history. Why? Because while everyone else was hunkering down in fear, there was a group of people who saw the opportunity in the adversity and they capitalized on it. And that has been, is, and always will be the case. The inheritors of the earth, the leaders of tomorrow are the ones who see the opportunity in adversity. The average see adversity in the opportunity. The extraordinary sees the opportunity in the adversity. The average sees the adversity in the opportunity. So I want you guys to be opportunity minded. I want you to be mission minded. You're on a mission to be a beacon of light in the darkness in such a time as this. Now, if you're noticing under all this you know, stress that the current situation is putting on you, that your business is not where it needs to be, you're leaving money on the table in your database, you're not attracting top producing realtors, you don't have enough sources of business, you have a rather anemic uh, set of lead sources, you're being more reactive than proactive, you do not have an effective way to proactively grow your business that's working, for example, you don't have a digital marketing system that allows you to generate quality leads consistently. You don't have a system for attracting top producing realtors. You don't have a system to dominate on Google. You don't have a system for mining the gold from your database at a high level with repeat and referral business. If you're noticing these cracks in your system that are now coming to light because of all this pressure and stress from the outside, I want to give you an opportunity to meet with me or one of my consultants for a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business and we look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now and where you wanna be and how to capitalize on this opportunity, capitalize on all this uncertainty to prosper even in spite of unprosperous times and to thrive in the face of everyone else just struggling to survive. And we're gonna to look to see if our systems can actually be of help to you. It's not the right model for everyone. We're not the right fit for everybody. But if we can help you create that breakthrough and we understand that you're an expert at being a mortgage professional, you're an expert at closing loans, you're an expert at helping your clients get the home loan they need to get into the home they want. But we also recognize that you're not experts in discerning whether or not we can help you with these systems in this model. We do. We do have that ex expertise and that discernment. So we're going to be able to uncover where you're at, where you want to be. And if we can help you create that breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you how to do that. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our service. Either way, though, you're going to leave this call with massive clarity like you've never had before. You're going to have more clarity on what it's going to take to create a breakthrough in your business than you ever have in your entire business bar freaking none. That's my promise to you. So if you'd like to take advantage of that complimentary breakthrough call, and uh, I can't imagine why you wouldn't because it's complimentary, no strings attached. And all it is is just a chat to help you get clarity like never before. I invite you to take advantage of this call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So go ahead and book that call. Let's have a chat. Let's get you clarity. Let's uncover what's really going on in your business, what's holding you back. And let's get you blasting past those constraints like paper walls, showing up with peace, poise, and power, and showing up as the light in the darkness. All right, guys?
So thanks for hanging with me. This is Dornell Dana, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. So just remember this, friends. Take sensible precautions. Remain in a resourceful state with peace, poise, power, and love, and be that beacon of light in the darkness for those who need you more than ever before right now. All right, guys, be blessed. I love you. Make it a great day. Peace.